What is up everyone and welcome to an awesome video that I've wanted to do for so so long and I finally gathered together everything I need and found a free day to do this. I'm so excited. Let's get straight down to explaining what the heck is happening. So this system behind me is my spare parts gaming PC but just a heads up I'm not going to be calling that calling it that for much longer because uh, it's not going to be a spare parts PC because I've actually gone to the effort of sourcing these extra components and these upgrades so it's probably just going to now be the gaming PC that I have at the moment. I only have one so if you guys see a future video that says gaming PC it's obviously about this system. The spare parts PC after this video technically is going to be no more. We are dismantling it but if you look at it from the exterior it's going to basically be the same system but much much better, so excited. So in case anyone doesn't know, what is this PC originally? Inside this PC we have a Socket 939 MSI motherboard with an Athlon X2 3800 Plus. That is a legendary CPU board combo on this channel. If you want to know more about it, go back and check out my older videos. My free PC was where I first got that lot and then I put it into my parents first computer that I built them um, before that we had a machine that I didn't even show on the channel, but I built them a system in a really cheap 999 case with that board CPU, some RAM, the video card that came with it, and they ran that for a good couple of years until I uh, built them a socket FM2 system with an APU and DDR3 and you know an SSD and all the swanky modern features um, to give them a smooth computing experience. I then had this board and CPU laying around so I decided to use a case power supply video card and stuff that I had lying around for various reasons, put it all together and create the spare parts gaming PC, which actually went about 10 times better than I thought it would. It's a surprisingly powerful platform. I put an SSD in it, which really, really helped with making the system feel newer. Um, but today we're going to revamp the whole thing. Um, but I'm not getting rid of the Socket 939 board. Now comment down below, please comment. If you guys that have been on this channel for years and years, if you've been subscribed and watching my videos, if you're interested in seeing me putting that MSI 939 board along with the 3800 plus CPU, the RAM, and all of that stuff, if you're interested in seeing me put it back into the red and black cheapo case as almost like a rebuilding my parents' original PC video, then please let me know. Maybe I can do a giveaway or something. It's a legendary system, and for the price, it was unbelievably awesome. So if you guys want to see me rebuild that, let me know, and I'll do that within the next couple of weeks or months or something. I'll do it sometime in the future. I think that would be really, really cool. Let me know down below. So, reminiscing aside, let's take a look at the new stuff we've got. So sitting right here, this is an AMD Phenom 2X4955. You may think, Tom, you've had one of those before, man. You put one of those in your 2011 gaming PC. As you guys know, I parted out my 2011 gaming PC. I sold the video card, RAM case. I didn't sell the RAM. I put the RAM in my parents' computer, sorry. I sold the video card, power supply, um, case, motherboard, all that stuff. I kept the fans. There were still the fans from that system in this system, which is cool. They were some of the spare parts that I had to build this system. But... The CPU, what happened when I took that system apart? Well, I dropped the CPU. And as it's an AMD CPU, you guys know the pins are on the CPU itself. They bent, but this morning my dad bent them back. If you take a look at this photograph, you can see that the pins are still straight. They're just wonky. So they're in their sort of ball sockets. My dad just bent them back. It took him like one and a half seconds. And now this CPU should work just fine, which is awesome. But if, if it doesn't work, I've got a backup, which is you know, nearly as good, but not quite as good. I'd love to use the Phenom, but at least I have a backup. As you guys may be able to see, there is a stock heatsink on this motherboard, and I'll talk about the motherboard bundle as a whole. There is a backup CPU under there. It is an Athlon 2X3. Can't remember the number for it, but yeah, it's a tri-core. You can unlock the fourth core. There are utilities to do that on this motherboard in the BIOS, I believe, or I don't know whether you have to do it in Windows. I've never looked into it. But you can unlock the fourth core on lots of these Athlons. Not all, but lots of them. And they do overclock as well. Um, I'm not sure, it, I don't think it's like a black edition, like you get the black edition Phenom, so you can't just crank up the multiplier and hope for the best. You do have to do some proper CPU overclocking work, but the Athlon will still be a nice CPU to use if we can't get the Phenom working. So the Athlon is sitting in this MSI, uh, can't remember the number of the board, I'll put it on the screen, I believe it's running on the 870 chipset, which is awesome. I should have got a board like this for my 2011 gaming PC back in the day. I should have just bit the bullet and gone SATA 6 gigabit a second, USB 3.0 and all that stuff. This is a beast board with those things that I mentioned as well as Crossfire support, something that I'd love to utilize in the future. 
hint, hint. If anyone has another 4870 to sell me, a Sapphire one, because it's got to be matching, because I'm fussy like that. Or if anyone has two graphics cards to sell me that are along the same lines, 5000 series, 6000 series AMD cards, let me know. I want two of them. I want a Crossfire, but that's in the future. Pretend I haven't said anything, but just drop me an email. It's my natural color at gmail.com. If anyone has any video cards for me, that'd be great. I want to fill these slots. So the board is super, super nice. And sitting in the board at the moment, we have some Kingston value RAM. They're one gig sticks each, DDR3 1333, I believe. Now, all of this lot, this motherboard bundle, I bought from Germany, actually. And I bought it from a very, very nice guy in Germany. So huge thank you, Jan. Jan, I can't pronounce it very well because I'm not German, obviously, but thank you, Jan, for your absolutely brilliant, brilliant packaging, very fast postage, and thank you for negotiating such a fantastic deal. Your board CPU and RAM is in a safe place and I will put it to great use. One last thing you guys might be able to see is this RAM. Thank you very much, Daniel, for yet another brilliant deal. I've received stuff off Daniel before as a donation, so we already sort of knew each other. He gave me pretty much a steal of a deal on this 4 gigabyte kit of PNY DDR3 1333 MHz. It'll bring the system up to 6 gigs of RAM uh, total, I believe. Or are these 2 gig sticks? I believe they're 1 gig sticks. So 6 gigs of RAM total, which is plenty for this system and absolutely great. Even four gigs would be enough, but you know, I might as well fill the slots. So Daniel, huge, huge thank you. You guys might be able to see the 212 Evo. We're gonna overclock the hell out of that. We're gonna try and get it at four gigahertz or whatever. I can't really remember what you can get out of these chips, um, but I think you can get quite a bit with one of these bad boys. I've also got the extra fan for it. Um, I'm just uber excited. I bought these on a whim in Maplins uh, with the insight to use them for a project like this one day. So I'm very pleased with that. Guys, rambling over. Let's get to building the system. Let's have a good laugh. Hopefully you'll stick with me all the way through the video. Um, yeah, let's try it out. This is gonna be awesome. So guys, just as a little side note, when you're looking into this PC, this was purely a spare parts PC when I initially put it together. So everything in here is a mishmash, match mish of random components that I had lying around. So there's no color coordination or anything like that at all. It's just all stuck together. And considering that, I think it looks really good. So let's go up the case and take a look at everything in this system um, because I wanna get one last shot of it as it is now because I think this is a cool system. I wanna do that before we take it apart. So down here we have a Zygmatek 120mm purple LED fan. This was in the front of my old 2011 gaming PC. The LEDs are pathetic and the purple kind of sucks. It'll be coming out of this system, it's not needed. I just stuck it there because there was a, a spare fan and a spare fan slot and I thought it would be cool. I kind of went crazy on the cooling in this system for no apparent reason uh, and it annoyed a lot of people, but a lot of people also understood that I was just having fun and just going for it. The PSU is something that we'll be keeping for now. It's a Thermaltake TWV Total Watt Viewer um, 500 watt PSU. I do believe it has an 80 plus certification. I believe it's just standard 80 plus. Can I see on the label? I can't actually see, I'm not even sure guys, it's an older thermal take unit. Um, a little bit annoying, I'm missing one of the modular cables for PCIe, so I have to use some Molex adapters and stuff, I believe. Um, that is quite annoying, but it is what it is. This comes with a, a funky front panel watt readout, so it shows you how much your system is using, and it also has a fan controller knob on it that doesn't appear to work. Um, but yeah, decent PSU, but I will probably put a different PSU in this system um, in a few weeks' time. I want this to be my spare testing PSU, but it's not quite good enough for what I want to use this system for before I sell it on or whatever. I want a little bit of a newer, better PSU for this system, especially, hint, 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 if I get two video cards, please email me. Um, here we have a sound card. The sound is very, very hard to get working on this motherboard, so I always use a sound card. Here is a PCI fan. As Again, I just stuck it in there. It was LED. I stuck it in there for a laugh. This thing is a pile of junk. There is the legendary 4870. Still a very good card by today's standards. Over here, we have a Western Digital Caviar Blue 640 gig. And above that, we have an Intel SSD. I believe it's a 60 gig model, but we'll have to check that. So coming up, 
Oh, and also, by the way, in the front of the system, we have two Yate Loon 120mm blue LED fans. We also have one of those in the back right there. They are great fans. I got them for free with this case. I bought this case on eBay for a future gaming build back in the day, and I had it in storage for quite a while, but then I finally used it for this purpose. But this is the only build that I've ever had in this case, so it would be nice to put some newer hardware in this quite beastly case. The case is very, very nice. It takes sort of... Um, elements from the Antec 900D in cases like that. It's a very sort of 2007 crisis era kind of design case, but with modern features inside because it's a newer case. Um, here is the board, as you guys can see, stick out like a sore thumb. You've got IDE channels, so you can instantly tell that this is an older board. It does have SATA on board, but it's re revision one SATA, so I'm not getting nearly enough performance out of the SSD that it's capable of. Under the stock cooler, we have the Socket 939, which has a 3800 plus in it. That is a 2.2 gigahertz dual core, 64-bit uh, AMD CPU from back in the day. Absolutely lovely. There we have about 3.5 gigabytes worth of RAM, I believe. And in the top of the system that you can't see in this particular shot, we have an optical drive, which is just a standard, what is it, LG burner. And we also have two 140 millimeter exhaust fans in the top. They are Zygmatech fans that were in the top of my gaming PC. So what we're going to do now is speed up the footage a little bit and I'm going to take this system almost completely apart. So down here guys, basically I've set up the board with the video card and the CPU and RAM that came with it. No extra RAM, haven't changed the CPU, got the video card in there just so I can get output to the display to check out what's happening with the board. And of course we're hooked up to the PSU, I've taken the PSU out of the case, there it is. Uh, if you're wondering about the Molex, this PSU does have two PCIe 6 pin outputs but the modular cable that I received, the second modular cable, was for the wrong PSU. I've never had it, so unfortunately I've got to use a Molex to uh, 6-pin PCIe, but that doesn't make much of a difference to me. It's just a bit of a shame because this power supply can easily, uh, it can output from those connectors. So I have been trying to look for one, but it's just pretty much impossible. This wasn't a very popular model of uh, power supply. Anyway, I got it connected to the test bench monitor, which is very exciting. So what we're gonna do is boot it up and basically see what it does. So I know this isn't the best angle, guys. Let's turn that like that a little bit, maybe. Yes, that is slightly better. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the PSU on. The PSU is now on. Whoops, apologies guys. That is the first time I've kicked you in the video and I'll probably kick the tripod many times, many more times. So. Man, that's a bit louder than I thought it would be. That's the video card in case anyone's wondering. So, the board has powered up, which is a really good start. Uh, this monitor is on the wrong input. Set it to DVI. And let's see if we get any kind of output. We currently have no output. 
which is interesting guys which is very interesting has the system posted that is the question by the looks of things guys the system hasn't posted right then folks I'm gonna pause the camera um, I don't think the system has actually posted I need to download this motherboard manual because it does have some LED readouts um, yeah I'm not getting any kind of feedback on the keyboard LEDs and it is a PS2 keyboard and the video card fan is pretty mental and there's a lot of LEDs on this board so I'm not sure if we're correctly posting at the moment I'm gonna figure this out okay folks so we have posted after a little bit of jiggery pokery which is always good um, so here we are the CPU in it at the moment is the Athlon 2 X3 450 which is cool um, we've also got 1333 megahertz RAM which is good let's hit F1 whoa that went a bit crazy <laughs> okay so as you can see um, standard you know this is a pre UEFI BIOS of course um, so what we're gonna just do for now is take a little look around the place here okay so they are uh, two gig sticks which is really good this CPU is running at 3.2 gigahertz um, so what I'm gonna do is probably power the system down put in the extra RAM and see if it detects it as six gigs which would be really really cool um, do you know I'm really pleased that this has booted up um, I'm not sure what happened really but maybe it just needed um, maybe it just needed a little chill out so let's power it off and put in the extra RAM. This will be the true test. Once we get this RAM out of the way and we get six gigs displaying, um, then we can start faffing with the CPU. So we know the board works. We know it boots up with the video card and my power supply, which is all good. Uh, but what we don't know is if my Phenom 2 actually works after it was dropped. So what we're doing is just eliminating everything one by one for now, making sure everything works and then we'll take out the CPU, try and put in the Phenom, and with a bit of luck, it'll boot up and everything will be absolutely fine. So there is the additional RAM. Let's turn the PSU back on. Let's boot up the system. Come on, screwdriver skills. I was expecting to see a power button on this board, actually, guys, because it does have an uh, OC button, an overclock button and dial, but here we go. Let's do that. And let's dive into the good old BIOS. So it's booted up again, which is which is good. F1 to enter setup. Let's take a little look. Physical memory. Okay, so it's only reading four gigs, which is interesting. Or is it? Hmm. This is why it's handy to have the manual. I still haven't downloaded it and read it, but I just assumed that you needed to put the bigger sticks in the black slots, and that is the case. Six gigs of RAM, or to be precise, 6,144 megs. Absolutely great. That is what I like to see. So without fiddling with anything else, we know the RAM works. We know the motherboard works. We know the video card works. Obviously, we've only tested it as far as going into the BIOS, but you can pretty much say that it works. We're just going to go for it. Um, we're going we're gonna to basically shut down the machine and um, swap out the CPU just to see if the Phenom works. Now, I am absolutely intrigued. Let's get a new angle. We'll take out the video card and that just so we've got enough space to work because uh, I'm also going to be putting the Hyper 212 Evo straight onto the Phenom. There's no point faffing around. Plus, the stock cooler that is on this now, if I move you guys down, the stock cooler that is on this is an AMD cooler that would come with an Athlon. But I'm not sure if you guys know, but when you get a Phenom, or when you used to get a Phenom, the stock cooler was actually really good. It had copper heat pipes and it was a lot bigger, but I used that with my parents' PC. It's on top of their APU at the moment, keeping it cooler than the standard cooler would. So I'm gonna disassemble this tiny little test bench and we are gonna whip out the CPU. I'm so excited to try this Phenom, guys. So guys, one thing that I'm super annoyed about is I can't actually find wherever I've put all of my CPU um, stuff in regards to thermal paste um, CPU cleaner because I do have the cleaner the proper surface cleaner the arctic surface cleaner stuff and also um, things like the, the cloths that I use to wipe CPUs and stuff so I believe the last time I used that stuff was with the Hackintosh 
And to be honest, I've looked in the motherboard box, the Hackintosh, I've looked absolutely everywhere. I've just spent about 15 minutes looking and I can't find anything. Um, no hint of any of that stuff. Let's take this, this RAM out for a second. I can't actually get to my, uh, can't get to my CPU cooler here. Um, so I'm really annoyed about that because I know I've got it and I know there's loads left, so I don't need to buy any more. Um, but it's just a pain when you can't find these things. Now, all I managed to find was an old tube of Arctic Silver 5, um, which is a really old tube. I used this for my X800 XT in the oven video um, because I actually used MX4 thermal grease on my Hackintosh, I believe, but I can't find the grease anywhere. And wherever the grease is, that's where the cleaner is. Man, why can't I unplug this connector? So, that has, to put it lightly, annoyed me, um, and I don't have any 99% alcohol or anything like that to clean off my Phenom. So, yes, very annoying, but at least I've managed to unplug this. So, here we have the classic AMD cooler, which is now removed from the CPU. So there is our Athlon Tri-Core, and what we're basically going to do, can you see on the camera guys? Yes you can, just about. Shall I zoom in? Why not? Let's try zooming in. How was that everyone? Did that work? Anyway, let's grab, let's grab the Phenom CPU. And it definitely does need cleaning, so I'm going to have to have another look for my thermal gloop and stuff like that. But anyway, let's swap out these CPUs. Ping with the little retention arm. My gosh, interesting. Anyway, let's get this phenom ready to go in. Get them ready to swap. Uh, this orientation. Okay, let's grab this Tricore Athlon, which will come in handy in the future. And let's grab this phenom, which is now sorted in terms of pins or at least, or at least I think it is, just about. Might be a bit of a struggle to get it to sit in the socket. We'll see, come on boy. I'm just gonna work on this up close off camera for a second. So folks, that is the Phenom in place. Now as you can see, it's quite a bit cleaner than it was. I've done my best to clean it with the uh, stuff that I have, but I do not have the proper CPU cleaning liquid. Um, I even looked back on my Hackintosh video to see if there was any hint of where I placed the CPU liquid after filming, but thanks to the crazy overproduced style of that video, uh, obviously I don't even begin to explain where the hell I put the CPU liquid. But if anything, that just made me more annoyed because I could see myself using it in that video and uh, I still can't find it. And I have spent a further 10 minutes looking and I can't find it. Anyway, um, CPU is in. I got dad back up here to um, have a little look at the pins and it was just a little bit of you know precise um, movement of a couple of the pins and then Bob's your uncle, we were sorted. So, that is that. Right now I'm gonna figure out the Hyper 212 Evo and I'm gonna do it off camera otherwise it's gonna waste an incredible amount of camera battery power and SD card space with just me staring at this thinking, how the hell do you put the damn thing on? Uh, so yeah, time to get the cooler on. This will be sort of like a Blue Peter moment. Here's one I prepared earlier type of uh, shot. One Hyper 212 Evo cooler on the CPU. Um, I actually put it on upside down the first time around, which is really annoying. It doesn't make any difference apart from the Cooler Master logo was upside down and that would have done my head in. So I've got it pointing this way, um, which I believe is, whoa, what was that? That was something. Oh, it's my Dalek falling off my speaker. Anyway, I believe this is the only way you can mount it on AMD, um, or maybe, just maybe you can mount it the other way. I can't tell, but this is the way I wanted to mount it anyway, because uh, the two 140mm fans will suck a lot more air out from the top than the rear 120 will. So the 120 can just pick up all the you know, ambient heat from there. The only slight downside is it draws quite a lot of heat from where the video card is, but I've got the two 120s in the front that will blow cold air over the top of the video card anyway. Um, 
And yeah, it's not going to make any much difference, is it? Let's face it, guys. This isn't a crucial build or anything. Right. This is the moment of truth. Underneath this CPU cooler that we've just put on is the Phenom 2955. The CPU that I bought brand new back in 2011, used it in my gaming PC for a little while and then dropped as I was dismantling it. So, let's try it out in three, two, one, go. And I really, really hope it works. Look at that, everyone. Look at that. AMD Phenom 2 X4955. That is awesome. Just to confirm. Oops. Whoops, whoops. Here we have it. Phenom 2. Oh, yes. X4955. 3.2 gigahertz. That's right. This one's stock is 3.2 gigahertz. The 965 is 3.4 gigahertz. Interesting. And of course, we have the six gigs of RAM. So that is excellent news, guys. That is really, really serious, excellent news. The fan is spinning on the CPU cooler, which is great. I am very, very happy, very happy. It is time to build inside the case. So I've got the board here just loosely placed into the system. One little thing that I forgot to mention, which is kind of sad, is I don't have any, uh, uh, any, what the hell am I speaking about? I don't have an IO shield, which is, you know, a bit gutting really, because it's just that one little step not quite there to being a complete, nicely finished system. Um, but do you know what? It's not the end of the world at all, and this PC has already taken a massive leap forward in how good it is. And I mean, just look at this. This is worlds apart. This motherboard matches my fans. It's so much newer. It's going to be so much quicker. It's going to be absolutely wild. And apart from the video card, which is bright red, I think this is going to look pretty good. Um, now, interestingly enough, if you see these three standoffs here, this motherboard is physically uh, shorter than the other motherboard, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is screw this in off camera because it's a little bit hard to line up without the IO shield and then I will be back for screwing in the PSU and well everything else is pretty much there. The rest is just uh, getting started on the wiring. Now one thing I will say is I currently have this purple fan in the bottom. Can you see it in frame? Kind of. I currently have this purple fan. Um, I'm probably going to replace it with that Cooler Master fan. I didn't put the Cooler Master fan up here because there's plenty of fans up here, but with three exhausts and two intakes, and with two of the exhausts being quite big, um, I'm not really keen on that because it will drag dust in from non-fan areas, and areas in the case where there aren't any fans, and it'll be more, it'll be a more dusty system. So, so you know what, for the hell of it, guys, and I'm not even going to try and justify it, I'm going to put the Cooler Master fan in the bottom. Three intakes, three exhausts, Fan on the CPU heatsink, fan on the video card. This is going to be one fanny system, but uh, yeah. Okay, let's screw the motherboard in. As you guys can see, system is looking really, really good. I've put that Cooler Master fan in the bottom. It looks a lot nicer than that uh, see-through Zygma Tech one. You can see, obviously, the fans up the top there, the CPU cooler, motherboard, all looking really sweet. Of course, this system is already pretty much built in the sense that we have all the drives in the front, so optical drive, SSD sitting right there, as well as the hard drive there. There's a bit of tidying up I need to do with the drive bays, um, but you can see the front fans in there. They're two Yate Loon 120 mils, just like this back one. Uh, the design of these front fan things on this case is really, really cool. Um, so that is pretty much that. What I'm going to do now is put the PSU in the bottom of the case, screw it in, and route all the cables back out the back, uh, try and reattach the rubber grommets, and then just wire everything up really, and we'll be pretty much there. All right, everyone. Quick test before tying back all the cables uh, behind the motherboard tray here. It's all built around the front. I'll show you in a second. Um, but let's fire that on. Press the magic power button. And then, how are we looking? Display. Lovely. And it should at least attempt to boot into Windows because we have the drive connected. 
There we go, starting windows. Fantastic. This obviously isn't the quietest system in the world. Most of the fans are powered directly off the PSU. Um, but all I'm going to do now is tie all these cables back, put this side panel on, and then show you guys the other side. Because considering the, the parts and stuff, I don't think I've done um, that bad a job of building this system. So looking at this side, considering everything, um, I think this looks pretty damn good. Now, I'm just going to make a couple of notes. Firstly, I haven't bothered putting the rubber grommets back. This is because I want a different PSU and I'm going to have to rewire the whole system anyway. So any PSU related cables that you see are not the neatest, um, but this power supply, although it's modular, it's old school modular. So it hasn't got the best, the stems aren't the best, the actual um, sort of runs of, of modular cabling. Like it doesn't have combination Molex SATA, um, little parts, little cables, and it's just very, very annoying because even though it's modular, there's almost no point because you have to use pretty much every single connection. And I'd be using this other PCIe as well uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I don't have one. So yeah, it's almost pointless having a modular um, PSU in this system because I'm using them all really. But other than that, things are looking great. As you guys can see, I've got these uber short SATA cables. There's one for the hard drive there one for the SSD there. This mess right here is for the graphics card. That's for the Molex 2 PCIe power. Nothing I can do about that. Something else that I also don't like is the blue SATA cable and the white power cable for the optical drive, but that can all be sorted. And there's the front panel connectors all plugged in. And as you can see, guys, it's pretty much pretty damn good to be honest and uh, I'm so chuffed with it it looks great um, I've got a few fan cables lurking here and there there's one going across the top of the graphics card there there's one coming down from the top there as you can see plugging in where's that plugging in then uh, it's plugging in somewhere oh yeah just under the cooler there as you can maybe see but all in all I think it's absolutely great, really, really great. Now, one thing I want to do is get a new PSU for sure, one that has um, nice sleeved cables, because this is horrible. If you imagine all that's black, that would look much better. And then I'll put the grommets back on the case, and it'll look a lot better. And yeah, get some more cables, maybe get a black 24 pin cable. And also, um, I haven't wired in this thing, because this goes with the PSU, so obviously I haven't bothered wiring it in. And I would like some kind of fan controller for all of these fans. Although they are LED fans, so turning them down means that you get that horrible flickery LED kind of thing happening. But um, it is what it is, and it's not perfect. But it's not meant to be perfect. This is still my spare parts gaming PC, really. Uh, just with a slightly different internals. So... I'm very, very pleased with this, guys. I'm going to put the side panel on, power it on, and see how quiet it is. I'm going to give it a fresh install of Windows, and uh, all that will be in the next video. So, actually, no. The install of Windows will be in this video. And then the next video will purely be sort of benchmarking and chats about the system, etc. So I'm going to put the side panel on. Let's take a look at it powered on. Here it is, everyone. Looking fairly impressive. And obviously uh, sounding fairly loud, but yeah. Obviously, it's going to be loud. Um, it's a nice system. It's looking actually really nice. I'm, I'm very, very pleased with uh, how it's turned out yet again. Um, but it's not really about the build as such, but about the performance with the much, much newer platform, uh, much more RAM. Um, video card is the same, but, you know, quad-core, Phenom, 955. It's a nice CPU. Um, let's see what this thing can do. So I'm going to grab my Windows disk and uh, plug in the monitor and see where we are. Okay, folks, so it's the end of the day and this pretty much took up my whole day. Um, but it was definitely worth it. I'm so, so pleased. I haven't reinstalled Windows. I know I was chatting about reinstalling Windows in the last clip or whatever. This is the same Windows install that's been on here since the start and uh, it's still working strong. Um, there were pretty much no driver issues when I started up with this, which is crazy because this is quite, uh, this is a couple of generations newer, a good you know half a decade newer in terms of hardware, and everything seems to be working fine. Uh, I didn't have any network drivers or audio drivers, so I loaded both of those, and I haven't delved in further to the whole drivers thing. That's the GPU. I've only just switched the system on. Um, 
but yeah, I'll, I, I think I will opt for a fresh install just to make sure everything's okay, but I'm not going to do that until I've finalised the hardware. Now, as you guys can probably hear, if I just shut up for a second, you guys can probably hear that this is quite a loud system. Naturally, it's going to be loud. There's two 120s in the front, a 120 in the bottom, a 120 in the back, and two 140s in the top, and they're all on full. Um, and that's not including the power supply fan, the graphics card fan, and of course the CPU fan. So there are way too many fans in this system. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is, the loudest fan in the system by far is that Cooler Master one in the bottom. So what I'm probably going to do is take that out. One of the reasons why I've got it in there anyway is because it, it's like a placeholder for all of those cables. Um, but once I get a new PSU and the cables are a lot easier to manage, I will not need that anymore and it'll be a bit more spacious down the bottom there. Um, also, I really, really don't need those two 140s in the top. I just don't. I'm either going to take out the back 120 and one of the 140s or, I don't know, something like that. But I'll keep the two front 120s because they look good and, yeah, two intakes at the front, you know, you can't go wrong really. So. This is a nice system, everything is working great, so a huge thank you to the people that I bought these components off. Um, plans, my plans are get a new PSU because this PSU is really annoying me at the moment just for the fact that I've got all those stupid dangly cables at the back. Uh, the cables are really, really annoying and uh, I don't want this total watt viewer anymore and I don't want any of the fancy features that it has. I just want a plain and simple, nice looking, nice cable piece, P PSU. Sorry everyone, I'm getting a bit tired now. Um, also, I want some kind of fan controller or something. Either that or just slim down the fans and get the adequate extension cables and run them all off the motherboard. Uh, but the motherboard only has three fan headers, I believe. So, um, yeah, we'll see We'll see what happens there. But all in all, I am pretty damn pleased with this. And, of course, once I take a couple of fans out, I'm going to need some kind of case lighting in there. So I'll probably um, get some LED strips for it. And then it'll probably work out like I've spent more money than I can get if I sell the system uh, as a whole system on eBay or whatever. But it doesn't really matter because I've had fun building it. To, this is the brilliant, brilliant thing, right guys? I've done this and I didn't know any of it was going to work, but the most annoying thing about the whole day is the escape key on my HP keyboard seems to have broken itself. So I have no escape. Look, if I press start there, I can't escape from it. So it's really, really annoying. Um, I can't escape any games. It's so, so annoying. And uh, this is like the best keyboard I actually have, believe it or not. Um, it's such a nice feeling keyboard for a cheap keyboard. Um, so I'm going to need to get a keyboard at some point. But yeah, I'm just rambling now, guys. Remember what I said about video cards? Please comment down below if anyone, you know, wants to make me an offer or you know, if anyone wants me to make them an offer or whatever. But overall, I'm very pleased. Um, stay tuned for overclocking, benchmarking, gaming, and hardware changes. So PSU change, hopefully some video card changes, and rejigging either the amount of fans that I have or adding a fan controller or something like that. I just don't want to do any of that until, uh, until I got all those awful cables out of the way from this PSU. So, huge thank you for watching everyone, hope you like my system, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Just as a side note guys, I've pulled out this compact keyboard, and uh, yeah, the escape key isn't working on that either, so it's something in my system. I'm going to give this a fresh install of Windows, definitely, because um, it just needs it, it's a bit flaky around the edges, so yeah.